Oshkosh is arriving runway 27 and 36 save stages 8 and 12 of the NOTAM. Please become familiar with these stages. All right, we got high wing canard uh, inbound here. Uh, you're going to be going to runway 27 to see you on the railroad tracks here. And uh, you enter the left downwind, of course, the right downwind for runway 27 inside the gravel pit. You begin to descent. And your descent is going to be 1,800 feet for a canard. You got a raw uh, wing rock today? Very nice. Where are you in from today? Uh, Northern California. Fantastic. Welcome to Oshkosh. You get monitored tower on 118.5. First off, is one of the largest activities in all of Civil Air Patrol. We have usually around 150 cadets every year. In addition to being one of the largest, we also are the most visible activity in all of Civil Air Patrol. Most other Civil Air Patrol activities really are focused on CAP itself and the group that they're dealing with at the time. What we do at National Blue Beret affects hundreds of thousands of people as well, and that is something I don't think any other activity can boast really. The camaraderie that you have with KSA, you've worked very hard during these two weeks to um, earn all the rights and privileges that come with being a beret, as well as all the leadership experience that not only will you use with your cadets, but with um, the you will pass on to, to, to the next generation. It presents challenges that you don't get anywhere else. It combines all three areas of Civil Air Patrol's uh, three missions. You have aerospace education in that you're at an air show, you're learning about all these aircraft, you're learning about the history of aviation and you're meeting people who have made history in aviation. National Blue Beret brings a, a workplace environment to, to the cadets. It's, that's kind of unique, I think, in, in Civil Air Patrol and the activities that the cadets attend. Um, it's more real life. You, know, you have employers and, and uh, jobs to do, deadlines to keep, tasks to accomplish. Uh, in the workplace, so this is really reflective of, of that reality uh, in, of course, in an air show environment, but, uh, but it's a lot of the same elements of a professional environment and they try to uh, get their minds wrapped around that and it really brings an interesting element to uh, leading a group in that, in that, in that way. For cadet programs, obviously it is a National Cadet Special Activity. Most of the work is done by cadets um, with assistance by senior members who serve as training officers as well as work at um, mission base. Finally, emergency services comes into play in that we assist Wisconsin Wing in their search and rescue mission that occurs during air venture. We have multiple cadets out throughout the day working trying to find overdue aircraft, looking for 
ELTs that have gone off. We watch all the aircraft landing, aircraft taxiing across. We write down their tail numbers, make, model, colors, etc. so that if we have an overdue aircraft, we can just turn to our logs and say, yes, they landed here, North Tower spotted them at this time. It's good to have that confirmation so we know they're on the field. All stations, all stations, we have a 46 ELT, copy. up early because we have to be on the flight line because nothing happens here uh, with regards to flight operations without us. It is, we have a very important role, we have a key role here, and we cannot fail in our duties. So the first week is primarily geared towards training and training all day up until night and as soon as you go to bed and up the early next morning to continue. So every day we have the cadets wake up at about 0530 in the morning. Um, after that, the next hour or so they spend getting ready, making the bunks showering, just getting ready for the day. At 6.30 we usually have formation. All of the flights who are not busy with other duties essential to the mission of Blue Beret are present at formation. Between breakfast and dinner, usually we have cadets going all over the place working various areas. Um, they pull security on the flight line at places such as Warbirds and Ultralights. We have three flights at any given moment, um, at Flight Line North, Flight Line Central, and Flight Line South. The majority of the cadets spend their time on the flight line uh, marshalling mostly general aviation. Sometimes they'll get lucky and they'll get a Warbird or um, a larger jet or something cool like that. We just marshaled the incoming, the mass arrival of the Moonies, so that was 60 aircraft, I believe, plus about 50 others during our shift, so we just marshaled more aircraft than I would in a year in Montana, I guess, is what we just did. You have to keep looking around because you don't know if there's going to be aircraft behind you or a jet, because sometimes they're actually that quiet and you, you can't see it coming. Blood, sweat, tears, but most of all, sweat, because uh, you know if you're gonna be sweating a lot. You know you're marshaling planes out on the flight line, and planes aren't stopping because you're hot and you're wearing long sleeves. You know because it's a 90 degrees outside with a real feel of 100. You know it's just working and knowing that you're the backbone of the air show and that without you, it's not gonna happen.
up at four because we have to feed at six. One morning we uh, we got up at 4.30 and they said, oh, we need to eat at six and we were, we were pushing it. Do you need that extra half hour in, in cooking? So from then you do breakfast and once breakfast is over with, uh, it's into cleanup and getting ready for lunch. And uh, we do lunch and a shift change. There's this, the afternoon shift comes in and um, and usually it's not closed up and all cleaned up and everyone out of here until um, about 20 hundred at night. Now I gotta do something with all this pancake batter. Yeah, you got a lot of it. I said I should pour it in a pan and just let it bake up like a coffee cake. A lot of people think coming to the kitchen is, you know, um, not gonna be a very good experience. I try to make it a good experience. I, I feel that if, um, if they leave from here and haven't learned anything, then I have failed. After breakfast in the morning, or actually we have a formation first and then we have breakfast, um, it's immediately right back to work and cadets go off to their various stations wherever they need to be. Some cadets will go to the flight line, some will help out on the beret compound with kitchen duty, with guard shack duty. We're responsible for checking any vehicles or personnel that come in and out of the compound. Uh, there's three of us that are on gate duty. Uh, two people are at the primary gate, which is the exit gate, and one person is assigned to the, uh, the uh, inside gate, which would be processing vehicles and personnel to enter the compound. If any visitors come here, um, depending on who they are, we'll um, give them escort and we'll give them a little badge so they can be uh, viewed around the compound. And for the most part, that's what we do. During the night, we also have a, a guard shift as well as in the day. That's important. Yeah, and she burns too, so he's... Working Air Venture, we have over half a million spectators every year. And all of those eyes are on us, not to mention those who see it online, um, in print, and through other sources of media. On a daily basis, um, we do a lot of photography, a lot of videography. So basically, we're getting all of the... Um, media for a couple avenues. We're publishing to the parents so that they can see what their kids are doing, publishing to the cadets so that when they're done with the activity they can kind of relive it, and we're publishing to the general public and the media so that they can say, hey, this is what Civil Air Patrol is doing, this is what they can potentially offer our organization, and the news can report on that kind of stuff so that you know we have a wider avenue of release. You have a set schedule that you have to stick to. So for example, Alpha Flight is going to go to flight line from 9 to 11, right? Public Affairs, however, goes, I'm going to go here, 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 and here, all in the space of about an hour. And I can experience the air show better than pretty much anybody on compound. So that's kind of one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to do. teach that when you wear the beret, it's, it's not, look at me. It's not when I'm saying look at me to somebody else. I'm looking at me and the way I carry myself and the way that I behave, the standards that I keep. And it, it reminds me to keep those standards high and, uh, and care about people. That's what we're trying to teach here. And uh, it, it is real easy for to, to move right past pride and, and into too much pride. And, uh, we, we hit that really hard here. We really try to help the cadets understand there's no place for, for a pompous, elitist attitude among berets. Public service is really one of the most important pinnacles of what we do in CAP. and. When you see somebody with this beret, you know that they worked hard in order to perform a valuable public service.
Good answer. That would appear to be a, a, an aircraft here. As you can see, uh, outside of, outside, ah yes, thank you. Oh yes, okay. Reporting live here from the compound, I'm Second Lieutenant Cole Oakland. Over here, over here is an aircraft here at Whitman Field, Oshkosh Air Venture 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard it here first from the compound. Oh my God, there's another one right over there. There it is, right there. You can see it here first, live from Air Venture 2016 National Blue Beret. Oh my God, there's two at the same time, same takeoff. Look at that, it's awesome. Whoa, that is some quality reporting, folks. Quality reporting. Reporting live from the compound. I'm Cadet Second Lieutenant Cole Oakland.